Hey, y'all need a break. Listen to these stories from r slash confession. When I was 7 I threw a brick at a girl's face now she's blind. I'm 24 years old and I grew up in a third world country, Brazil, two of my cousins lived close by, they were my age at the time. We used to ride our bikes together every weekend around the neighborhood we grew up in, we loved that shit. Some of my best childhood memories. We lived in a rich area but we grew up poor and I don't know if that was worth mentioning or has any relevance but we used to ride in our underwear because we were savage kids. On one particular day we left the neighborhood and stumbled upon another group of three kids. Two boys and one girl they were probably the same age as us. My stupid cousin stops to say, hi, once they laid eyes on us they just started laughing us and mocking us calling us, underwear boys, and literally calling us homosexuals because we were in our undies but weren't clothed. Kids can be so goddamn cruel and at the time I was in shock and humiliated. I have no idea why I did this nor did I mean to single any of them out, but I just looked around and saw a big brick on the floor of the road. I remember this perfectly, I picked it up and prepared to throw it, like a shot put competitor would because it was too heavy for me to throw it over arm style, so instead I shot put launched the brick right into nose of the little girl and it rolled into her eye. As soon as that happened she dropped on the ground bleeding and started screaming, everyone started yelling. We just rolled back on our bikes and pedaled as quick as we could. Once we rushed home we hid under the bed after like an hour, my auntie found us and interrogated the story out of us. She was furious but didn't narc, the dad of the little girl must have came out because some 40 year old man was knocking in every house trying to find us but couldn't figure out where we lived. Years later when I came back to visit my cousin I saw this girl with an eye patch on her face and she's turned into beautiful woman. Wish I could apologize, damn, it's just not possible. I just felt like leaving this here, sorry for spelling and grammar mistakes. Got my troubled ex-best friend kicked out of middle school. Back in middle school, early 2000s, I had this semi-troubled best friend. Let's call her Jane. Jane and I hung out every day and were inseparable. We talked about boys and just about every normal teenage girl thing. Now, my mom never liked Jane but still let me go over to her house. Honestly I can't remember much about her past but I remember her always being super mean to her mom. I don't really remember what caused our friendship to come apart but eventually it did, we were no longer friends. Jane had started to slightly bully me in the hallways before slash after class. One time, I remember she gave my house phone number to this other troubled slow kid in our grade and he obsessively called my house lol. She was just causing a lot of problems with stuff like that. One day, she came up behind me and kicked the back of my leg while I was at my locker. It really wasn't that hard but I had enough at that point. I believe she was harassing my other friends as well. Me and two other girls collectively decided and plotted out her demise. We wanted to have physical evidence of her bullying. I remember going home that night and beating my shin with a shoe so I'd have a bruise. My other two friends did similar actions and has different back stories to the bruises. I remember talking to the principal and telling him our fake stories. I also remember the school nurse taking photos of all of our bruises in her office. Jane was gone very shortly after. Happened over 20 years ago and I still think about that. When I was a kid, I'd intentionally put lice in other kids' hair. It's pretty safe to say I was a weird kid. In my 10-year-old mind, it wasn't fair that I had nits and none of my classmates did, they probably did as well honestly. To combat this, I decided it would be a smart idea to pick my lice out and drop them in other people's hair as I walked past them. I even did it to the teacher on multiple occasions and I did it for months, maybe even over a year. TLDR. I was a little asshole as a kid. Holy fuck, the girl next to me in 7th grade science class used to do this and I was terrified of her. Once she took a fork in the lunch line combed her hair with it and put it back. When I was a kid I oiled my dad's brakes on purpose. When I was like 7 or 8 I was getting pocket money to save up for a Lego set or new Xbox 360 game, whatever it was I was doing little odd jobs around the house and my dad said I could clean his bike, which by the way were and still are his most prized possessions. He has like 5 now, well he said to me that I shouldn't oil or lube or put this cleaning stuff, I can't remember what it was I'm 15 now, in the brakes or onto any of the discs and things that requires friction to work. I asked why and he said they wouldn't work so he could be hurt very badly or die. I have no idea why, unless I listen to the voice, not literally just my voice, that tells me I'm a psychopath, I did it I guess curiosity or something or that it was a game or it wouldn't really happen, dad wouldn't just die. Anyway I did exactly the opposite of what he said and oiled or cleaned all those parts, luckily he's still alive but I'm pretty sure I was very very scared when he next went out cycling on his bike. I threw my father's telephone into the Grand Canyon. When I was 10 or 11, my whole family went on a trip around Arizona. Of course, during this road trip, we ended up stopping by Grand Canyon National Park, where we camped for a couple days. 
So eventually we hiked up to Yuvapai Point to get a family photo. After we took the photo, while my mother and father were messing with the camera and enjoying the view, I, for some reason, decided to take my dad's telephone out of his hiking bag and throw it over the side. I'm not quite sure how nobody saw me doing this, but it fell a solid few hundred feet until I couldn't see it anymore. Obviously my dad noticed after a few hours that his cell phone was missing and spent the rest of the day looking for it. At this point I was seriously regretting my stupid impulsive decision but I kept my mouth shut. He got really upset because all of his old friend's contacts and photos were on this phone so the rest of the trip was ruined. When we got back, apparently his boss had been trying to call him non-stop for days over some sort of urgent work issue. I'm pretty sure this had something to do with my dad being fired a few months later. I'm writing this so many years later because I still feel really bad about this and I can't help but think that my life would be drastically different if I hadn't made that stupid decision. I tried to teach the kid I nanny how to drive, she was 12. So you probably read the title and think why the fuck would anyone do this, and honestly these kids are the most mature kids I've ever met. Not an excuse, but anyways, I nanny two kids and had just dropped off the oldest at their therapy session and had time to waste since it was an hour away from home so I drove to a big parking lot and decided to try and teach the younger one how to drive. She was going a little fast and told her to slow down, she did. Then she went around a corner a bit too fast and instead of braking, she hit and ran over a parking street sign. It was in the back of a building, but as soon as she ran it over we Chinese fire drill style run into the other's seat and I drove off. She literally plowed down this street sign, fully knocked off its post. I ended up never getting in any type of trouble for it. Long story short, she ended up tearing through my radiator and costing me $500 in repairs to my personal vehicle. It ended up going through insurance because I told her dad and everyone that I hit a big tree branch one night when it was storming really bad. She never told her sister, and her dad still thinks my car broke from a tree branch. The repairs would have cost me $5,800. I tried to terminate my pregnancy the entire nine months. I never wanted kids ever. At the beginning of my relationship I specifically told my boyfriend I don't want kids. Soon after I ended up pregnant, at first I was happy, but over time I started to panic and think awful things. I scheduled an appointment to get an abortion, but I was too far along and it couldn't be done. I planned everything out I bought a small jewelry box as a casket for my baby, I wrote and rehearsed a lie about having a miscarriage. I looked up ways to terminate a pregnancy at home, pills I could take, throwing myself downstairs. Yes I did. I even purposely fell on my stomach, laid flat on my back, starved myself. After everything, he was still alive and perfect, after a while I stopped and went into a depression and I still am. I was hoping something went wrong and he would be stillborn. Now four months later I still have these thoughts, I miss my old life, I miss sleeping all night, going out with friends, staying out all night, I miss my old life. I feel trapped, and I can never escape this life but I do love my son so much. When I look at his cute smile and the way he looks at me, I think about all the things I did and it makes me cry, I look at him and I apologize all the time. He is healthy and a happy baby but a part of me still wishes I went to the clinic sooner. I know what I did was wrong and I hate myself for it now. I'm sorry if this is too triggering to read but this is my confession. Edit, I knew this would be an extreme confession, I didn't post to seek sympathy. I am seeking therapy for those who keep suggesting. Adoption is not an option for me. This post was to simply get something I've had on my mind out. I know there are some who are upset about what I did and I understand that. I also forgot to clarify I used to travel pick up my stuff and go, I am not a drinker, just simply traveling to places. There is a lot more that lead to my actions in this post. I can't reply to any more comments but thank you for the lovely messages, and the others telling me I'm horrible, thank you. I respect everyone's opinion, I already accepted to get some backlash. My son is fine, I am in a much better place than I was before, this was just to get it off my chest and vent. I robbed a church because I was an angry, bitter alcoholic. When I was younger, many years ago, a friend of mine and I decided it would be a good idea to break into a church and steal money from it so I had gas for my car, a pack of cigarettes, and a bottle of booze to drink. It's been years since this happened and I've been sober for 6 years now, but I'm ashamed of it and always worried the cops are going to bust down my door for it, even though the statute for it is up. Edit, I did not expect this to blow up as much as it did. Thank you for reading my confession, and thank you for the silver. Edit 2, for clarification, I was about 2021 when I broke into this church. I got sober at 24. I know we took a lot of cash out of the prayer slash donation box and stole a few credit cards, but I don't know or remember exactly how much. I was bitter and angry at the world and thought that churches made enough money that it wouldn't be missed and was just mad at God and Jesus in general. I've turned my life around, 
I have a great job working with teenagers and trying to teach them how to not make the same stupid mistakes I've made in my life. I'm still ashamed that I stooped so low, but I've moved out of the city this happened in. I lied to a blind neighbor and told him I moved away. Many years ago, I was standing on one of my balconies when a taxi driver was obnoxiously blowing his horn out front and yelling for a blind man to walk toward my voice from his own townhouse. That direction was toward traffic. My roommate and I went down and helped him to the taxi and scolded the driver for being so rude. I made the mistake of giving the blind neighbor my phone number so that I could give him a ride in the future. Then the phone calls came, and never stopped. And when I gave him a ride, he would ask for various detours. I'm very calculated by nature, if he had told me beforehand where he wanted to go, it would be cool, but no. We'd be driving along and he'd throw in two to three extra places on each ride. And it came to be every day that he wanted rides, and he'd even call me to remind me to give him a ride, not that was ever late or backed out. Finally, I had enough, so I gauged how blind he was. His response was that he was blind as a bat. A week or two after he said that, I told him I had a job interview in the next city. A week after that, I told him I got the job and was moving away in a month. After I moved away, it was strange as hell walking by him in silence as he stood on the sidewalk. Lied to get out of a school project and ended up stuck in therapy for a year. When I was a senior in high school, in the beginning of the school year we had to do a project where we had to do a presentation and show how to do something step by step. I picked making chocolate chip cookies, so when I was going to present, I had to show a step by step on how to make them so I had to bring in milk, eggs, bowls etc. We had three weeks to plan for the project but it was the day I had to present and I didn't prepare or bring anything. So as soon as I got to school I went into my English class and told my teacher I didn't have anything because my mom and dad got into a fight two night before and my dad kicked us out and we've been living in a hotel. She said it was okay and that she would give me credit for my written part. The next week when I was in third period, I get called into the office. The school therapist was there and told me she wanted to talk to me. She asked me if everything was okay at home and I didn't want to have to do my project and get caught lying, so I kept with the story that my dad kicked us out. I started crying and the therapist told me she would like to see me once a week. So I went for my whole senior year once a week to therapy to avoid doing one project. I kicked a hitchhiker out of my car in the middle of the desert. About 8 months ago, I was driving alone on a trip to visit my parents. Most of this drive goes through a desolate desert with barely any vegetation. Approximately an hour into the drive, I saw a 20 to 30 year old with shorts, t-shirt, backpack, and a water bottle giving me the thumbs up on the side of the road. Considering the road is less used nowadays, I decided to help him out because it didn't seem like he would see anyone else that day. At first he seemed quite normal at first, but after we introduced each other and had a couple conversations, he started to act strangely. He would occasionally flick his head twice and make a face, but would continue with the conversation like nothing happened. About 30 minutes after driving him, he started talking politics and was very adamant on his way of viewing things being correct. I wasn't afraid of sharing my own thoughts and opinions, so I did as respectfully as I could. Without warning, he cut me off mid-sentence and screamed at the top of his lungs. I was shocked and really didn't know what to do, looking back he was obviously on drugs. He pushed me past the point of comfort in my own vehicle at that point, so I pulled over and ordered him to get out of my car. He took his stuff and once outside, I zoomed off, leaving him at least 30 kilometers away from the nearest town. Later, when I arrived at my parents' house, I looked over to the passenger side door, and he left his water bottle. I assume he was fine, but who knows, maybe I killed some druggie because I didn't look to my right for a couple hours. I threw eggs from the 16th floor of my apartment to maintain peace and quiet. I used to live on the 16th floor of an apartment building. There was a pub on the ground floor and people would often congregate late at night in the street in front of the pub entrance. This was a hindrance to residents because we would wake up at 1 or 2 in morning to drunk people talking outside. My apartment had two balconies on two sides of the building, so I often looked down on people grouping together on both sides of the building. I got fed up with it and decided to drop an egg where a group of people were chatting. They immediately dispersed and I could enjoy my sleep again, I did this on another occasion and again, it worked. I started buying more eggs and it became a habit that I practiced for about 6 months. No one had a clue it was me and I even went to the pub and overheard people chatting about eggs being dropped from balconies in the building. Needless to say, I used to maintain peace and quiet by dropping eggs from my balconies. I pooed on the floor at McDonald's bathroom then left it. This happened when I was 9. My parents were getting us ready to leave, but I had incoming diarrhea. I lined up for the bathroom, three people ahead of me. I was desperately holding it in for the next 5 minutes. When it was my turn, I ran in, locked the doors and pulled my pants down, but I did not make it to the toilet. 
there it was, in the middle of the bathroom, a piping hot chocolate soft serve. I grabbed a bunch of tissue and scooped some of it into the toilet and left a few smears on the seat. Nine-year-old me panicking, while the next person is knocking on the door. Also at the point, my parents have been waiting for me for about 10 minutes already. I washed my hands, left the bathroom and pulled the door close as I exit so I won't get an immediate reaction. I then ran out of the McDonald's. I am deeply sorry to the staff that had to clean my mess and the person who tried to go in after me. I staged a robbery to steal from the store where I work. I work for a chain of 24-hour stores. Some time ago, for obvious reasons, I don't want to say exactly how long, I was working overnights. I hated it. It made me fully nocturnal to the point that the sun actually burned my eyes when I went out during the day. I hated the store, hated my town, and hated all of my co-workers. Because of all this, I was bordering on suicidal so I would fantasize about just taking the money and leaving for good while I stocked shelves. Did this every night for months, but I knew jail would be worse so I never did it. Well, one day, I was venting to a good friend about how I was feeling, basically telling him a lengthier version of that first paragraph. I figured he would tell me I'm going crazy, and I should quit and find a new job I don't hate so much. Instead, he and I came up with the idea to stage a robbery and take the money together. We took about two weeks to plan, and I even called out of one shift so we could hammer out the fine details LMFAO. The plan was that he would come in wearing a full face mask, long sleeves, and gloves so that you couldn't tell his ethnicity on the cameras. I also knew all of the camera dead spots, so we planned his escape route in such a way he couldn't really be tracked by them. We had the whole thing rehearsed and ready as if we were putting on a play. So the night finally comes, and I had him wait until my co-worker went on break so we wouldn't have an extra variable to plan around. He walks in during our deadest time of the night and we start really playing up the whole thing. He's pointing this fake gun in my face, I'm putting my hands up, shaking my head, all that. He has me lead him to the office where he makes me empty the safe for him, then he has me empty the registers for him on his way out. I give him a few minute head start while I pretend to be rattled and catch my breath, pretend I can't stop shaking enough to dial 911, and finally go alert my coworker that we were robbed and I was too freaked out to do it myself. The cops show up and take my statement. I told them he spoke with an accent that he did not. I fed them a lot of false info to take any suspicion away from my friend. My coworker saw nothing from the break room, so he couldn't give any info himself. It's corporate policy to give robbers whatever they want, so I got in no trouble at all. As a matter of fact, they paid me a bonus for handling it so well. They also took me off overnight shifts. Later, I told them I wasn't comfortable here anymore, so I put in for a transfer to the town I'd always wanted to live in. That process got expedited due to the situation. I'm not confessing to get it off my chest so much as I am because I couldn't be happier I did it. My life turned around immediately, and I have never been happier since I was a kid. Used the money to finally start college. TLDR a friend and I planned a fake robbery of the store I worked at, so we could take the money for ourselves. The company then paid me more and gave me a transfer to my dream city. I still work for the same company at even higher pay, and I'm glad I did it every single day. In fourth grade, I told my friend about my mom's affair and then accused her of lying and making it up. When I was in fourth grade, I saw my mom, who was married to my dad, kiss a family friend, also married with kids who went to my school, passionately on the lips at a small house party. I wasn't too phased by it at the time. I already knew there was something going on between them, and as a fourth grader I didn't really understand what cheating was, or that it was a really big deal in marriages. I ended up telling my group of friends about it on the playground and I named names. They knew the man as well. They were a very well-known, well-loved family. That night, my one friend tells her mom what I said and the next day my mom gets a call asking if it was true. When my mom came into my bedroom to ask me what I had said on the playground, and if I had used the word affair, I had, I totally panicked, I could tell from the tone of her voice, the seriousness of it, that I had done something really really bad. I vividly remember the dread I felt about this. I was already afraid of my mother's anger and rages over small things and this was the worst thing I had ever done. So I lied and said that I hadn't said anything. That night I remember the massive knot in my stomach from fear and I thought to myself that I wish I didn't have to wake up the next morning. I was a wreck for weeks. My mom asked me three times if I was sure I was telling the truth, and I said yes all three times. I learned, after confessing the truth to my mom over five years later, in high school, that apparently everyone had believed my story and thought that my friend, the other girl, was just making up stories. I feel so bad to this day when I think of it. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments.